Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this magnifying glass effect. To get the magnifying glass effect, we'll be using a copy function within p5.js, so let's look at the reference page. The copy function copies pixels from a source image to a region of the canvas, and the source image can be both the canvas itself or a p5 image object, and I'll be showing you both ways. So let's look at the syntax. So these are the two ways that we can use this function, right? So one, you need a source image, and the other one, if you were to copy just the canvas itself, you don't need that. So the example here, you can see that they use the P5 image object to draw this image on the canvas, right? And they do that by preloading the image onto the canvas first. And then, as you can see here, the copy image has the source image called IMG. The first four arguments here are the locations of the X and Y coordinates of the top left corner of this smaller square here, right? And then the width and the height. So they'll copy this smaller square and then paste it where? Paste it here at the location of 35 by 25 at a size that is five times larger than the original copy region. And that's exactly what we'll be doing. For the first example, I'm going to use the canvas as a source image and I want to draw a grid of circles on this canvas. So I'm gonna start by declaring a few variables, columns, rows, and how about size, and set it to 40. Inside setup, I'm going to calculate columns as width divided by size and then rows as height divided by size and then inside here inside the draw function i'm going to use a nested for loop to draw out a grid of circles so for let i equals to zero i less than columns i plus plus for let j equals to zero j less than rows and then j plus plus then I'm going to use an ellipse function to draw out a grid of circles. And the ellipse function takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle, and then the third and the fourth are the width and the height. So how about we declare x to be equals to i times size, and then y to be equals to j times size. And by doing this, we can place the circles right next to each other and space them out evenly. And I'm going to provide x and y as the first two arguments and then give the width and the height as size. And as you can see here, the circles are not at the center of the canvas. And we can fix this by changing the ellipse mode. And the default ellipse mode is called center, which is where the x and y coordinate here is the center of the circles. But if we were to change the ellipse mode to corner, now, you can see that it fixed the problem, and that is because we're changing the first two arguments here to now be at the top left corner of the bounding box, the bounding square of this ellipse. All right, so now I want to color my circles. And before I do that, I'm going to change the background to white. And then I'm going to declare an array called colors. And this array is going to be this set of beautiful colors. And I want to go through this 1D color array to color all of these circles, right? But because this circle is positioned in a grid of X and Y, or I and J here, what we need to do is first we need to convert from I and J configuration here to an index of 1D array. And we can do that by multiplying J times rows plus I, right? For example, if we were to pick this circle here where I equals to one and J equals to one. So rows here is 10. So one times 10 is 10 plus one is 11. And so we get the 11th circle, which is this one. All right, and then next, what we need to do is that we're just going to put in fill, and then we're gonna put in our colors array and then put in the index. But this gives us an error and that is because the colors array only have how many colors here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It only has eight colors from index zero to seven, but we want to color so many circles, right? So we need to be able to loop through this index array and we can do that using an operator called modulo. What the modulo operator does is that it returns a remainder between a division of two numbers. So what we want to do is that we want to divide index with the length of the colors array. 
and the module operator is this percentage sign here. By dividing index, which goes between 0 and 99 because we have 100 circles, and the length of the colors array here, which we have a total of 8 colors, we'll always get a remainder that is between 0 and 7. If I click run, you can see that now it loops through the colors array over and over again. All right, now we're going to use the copy image to create the magnifying glass effect. So what we need to do is how about we start by declaring x and y variable. And then in the copy function, basically we need to provide eight arguments, right? The first four are going to be the x and y coordinates of the top left corner of the copy region that we want. And then the third and the fourth will be the width and the height. So I want to actually set x and y to be my mouse location. So mouse x and mouse y. And then how about we provide the size to be the width and the height to be the size of each of these circles here. And then for the last four arguments, that is going to be where you want to place the copied region and then the width and the height, right? So for the magnifying glass effect, what I want to do is that I want to actually just put it at the same location as the X and Y here. But for the size, I want it to be bigger by a specific scale. So how about we do size times scale and then size times scale. And this scale is going to be set at, let's start with how about a size of three. All right, okay, so I also want to create a border around this magnifying glass. I'm going to use the rect function, provide the four arguments as the same argument as where I display this image, right? So x, y, and size times scale. And then how about we put in no fill so that we can actually see the image. And then I want to set the stroke weight to be a little bit thicker at five. All right. Okay. So as you can see here, we get the magnifying effect. And if I place my mouse here, right, you can see that we see four circles, the one that I put the mouse on top, the one to the right, the one down, and then the one to the right and down. So it works perfectly. Now in the second example, I want to show you how to use the P5 image object as a source image. How about we comment out these circles first. Then we want to come to this arrow here, click the plus sign and then click create folder. I'm going to call this folder images. And then this is how you're going to upload the file. You just click the arrow sign here, click upload file, and then you're going to drag and drop your image into here. All right, and so once your file is uploaded, what you need to do is you need to declare a variable. I'm going to call mind img. And then you're going to use a function called preload. And this is how you're going to preload the image onto the sketch. And you want to set the variable img to a function called load image. And you're going to provide an argument. And this argument is going to be where your image is. And for mine, it's in a folder called images and the file is called makeart.png. So that's exactly what I'm going to put here. So you need to put a quotation mark, put in the name, backslash, and then the name of my file, makeart.png. And then I want to click run just to make sure everything works. All right, and so it works. And as you can see here, I actually put my image inside a folder called images, but actually you can just upload your file onto the same directory as all of these files. But I choose to do it this way because I feel like it's a little bit cleaner. All right, and right now I have not displayed my image onto the canvas, and so you don't get the magnifying effect that you want. So if I were to just keep the same copy function here, what we need to do is that we need to display the image and we can do that using a function called image. You're going to provide a few arguments. The first one is your image source. The second one and the third one is the X and Y coordinates of the top left corner of where you want to place your image. And I want to place it at the origin here, right? And because my file is off the size 400 by 400, which is the size of my canvas, I don't need to provide any more arguments. But let's say that you want to make it bigger or make it smaller, you can provide the fourth and the fifth argument to resize. So let's say I would do 200 by 200. 
So now my image is smaller. All right, but that's not what I want to do. So you can display the image and this, you still keep the same copy function because it's basically using the canvas as a source image. But if I comment this out and I provide image as the ninth argument inside the copy function, and now it's the image that is the source image for the copy function, and then you can see the magnifying effect. And as you can see here, you can create this secret message kind of effect using this copy function. And how about we, this way we don't really need to make a scale to be three anymore. You can just use the same size as the image, right? And then if I click run, let's make the size a bit bigger at 80. And this way you can display your secret message. Perfect. So I hope that this tutorial gives you a lot of new ideas to create cool effects using a very simple function. Give this one a try.